welcome to Garden Shows. Tonight, we wrap up the From Dust Till Dawn franchise with From Dust Till Dawn 3, The Hangman's Daughter. Once again, we have a prequel, but going back to the Old West this time. An outlaw named Johnny Madrid, a dual-wielding badass played by Marco Leonardi, has skipped out on his execution. And during his escape, he takes a hostage. And that hostage is, you guessed it, the hangman's daughter, Esmeralda. Eventually, he crosses paths with writer Ambrose Bierce, played by Robert Rodriguez, Quentin Tarantino, and Kevin Smith regular, Michael Parks, who's on his way to join Pancho Villa's army. It is me. I'm going to be a soldier with Villa. Meanwhile, the hangman, played by Django Fett and soon to be Boba Fett, Tamura Morrison, is hot on Johnny's trail. Arr! I'd rather see her dead. Go get the horses! Eventually, all three parties make a stop at the Titty Twister before it was the Titty Twister. And once again, all hell breaks loose with bloody savagery. And in order to survive, enemies must become allies. Everyone here has a score to settle, but for now all bets are off. Am I clear? Whew. There's our plot. So how does this cap off the series? Well, it's definitely entertaining, I'll give it that. But as for the story, this one feels like the creative team was running out of steam. The use of characters feels tired this time around. In the beginning, there's some great character setup, but by the end, there's not much payoff. Johnny is established as the badass of the movie, but that's it. He has moments where he tries to be a likable scoundrel, but then there are moments where he goes evil for no reason. Do you feel that rope getting tighter around your neck? Yeah. Johnny, stop it! Hey! No. And then he goes back to being a likable scoundrel. Well, what's gonna happen to me when I make you angry, huh? You don't make me angry. Ambrose is a bitter old man. I would be forced to take your life. I wouldn't want that on my conscience. And that's all there is to him. Michael Parks is a great actor and he does a good job here, but you wish there was more to his character. Esmeralda is nice, and she's nice. That's all I got. All the things they say about you, I don't believe them. And the hangman is a vicious killing machine. Neither of our protagonists show too many likable or redeemable qualities, so we wonder, why should we care whether they survive or not? In fact, in this movie, we have a lot of interesting side characters who are given their moment to shine. A young woman named Reese, who wishes for Johnny to teach her to become an outlaw. I want to be your apprentice. I want to be a real outlaw. John and Mary Newley, hmm, surprise it wasn't Winchester, a newlywed couple who have more than their fair share of problems. We've been married a week, Mary. And, I... and Ezra Trailer, played by American Gods Orlando Jones. Oh, there's a lot of dirt down here in Mexico. I make a killing that brushes and broom. But, uh... However, once their moments have passed, most of the characters are kind of just there till the story calls for someone else to die. The action is still pretty badass. Throughout the movie, we have some fun, well shot action sequences sprinkled in, complete with bullets and blood and then the eventual vampire staking. And there's some pretty decent stunt work shown up too. Also, the vampires have gone a little bit crazier. In this one, we got a vampire feeding on a horse. We got a freaky ass vampire with a cobra for a head. And a vampire sprouting motherfucking tentacles. Just when you thought they couldn't get any weirder, somehow these bastards do. And of course, there are some gnarly gore effects. I do love me a good head explosion. And we have another barroom massacre, with throats and guts being torn out, one of the highlights of the film. But there are a few times where the special effects come off as a bit cheap. There's some CG used here, primarily for the vampire bats, but there's a scene that cuts from CG and then back to practical bats. 
They stick out like a sore thumb, and they look really unconvincing. Luckily, they only appear briefly in a couple of scenes. As for the vampire deaths, there are a couple of cool kills, but not as many as the previous films. Most of the vamps killed here are staked, and that's it. The first half of the story starts off with a strong beginning. Look at the eyes that will watch you swing from that rope. My... And it sets up multiple storylines into motion. But by the second half, the majority of those storylines are either thrown out the window, or they don't lead up to much. There are hints that Ambrose Bierce might be psychic, but this is only touched upon twice. What kind of powers? Clairvoyance. And then it's never acknowledged again. There's a reason as to why the movie is subtitled The Hangman's Daughter. And once that's revealed, you think to yourself, so that's it? All this build up and little payoff. All right. For every good idea the filmmakers set up in the beginning, it was brought down by poor execution in the later half. By the time it all wraps up, it feels like nothing was lost, but nothing was earned either. It has some fun characters and solid action sequences, but by the end, they didn't know what direction to take the story. It's an entertaining, but flawed close to the series. Where most horror franchises make sequels that stray away from the original, From Dust Till Dawn made a clever move by not replicating the first movie, but to tell stories that take place in the same world. I recommend you watch the whole trilogy, either 321 or 123. That's up to the viewer to decide. Outlaws, blood sucking, sex, guns, and plenty of gruesome deaths to go around. It's a unique series among the vampire genre. And that's it for From Dusk Till Dawn. A fun series about outlaws and vampires. You didn't think that they would make a good mix, but you know, surprisingly, they actually do. If you get the chance, watch this trilogy. It kicks some serious ass. No bullshit. Now, for our next franchise, this one's a bit of a doozy. And yes, it's another werewolf franchise that we're covering. But this one in particular has quite the streak. You'll see what I mean by tomorrow. <laughs>